There is emotion that lives very deep inside me. That emotion is fear. Do you remember the last time when you were afraid? Maybe that time when your airplane hit a really bad turbulence? Or how about sitting in a dentist chair when he said there is nothing to worry about and reached for the drill? Or how about performing a speech in front of a large audience. Since my passion is music, and I work as a full-time composer, I would like to share my experience about how fear has helped me to create some of my most interesting and unexpected work. So let me take you several years back, when composing music was only a distant and seemingly unreachable dream of mine. My parents are doctors. This is my mom. And as a child, I spent most of my time after school in hospital hallways, operating rooms and nurse offices. Hearing the stories about people crashing in road accidents and bloated bodies that have been fetched out of rivers, I grew up being afraid of almost everything. I didn't swim until the age of 26. When I finally decided to take up swimming lessons with children's group, they all shouted at me with disapproval, thinking that tasks were too easy for me, and I made an unfair competition for them. Little did they know. I was afraid of darkness, afraid of heights, afraid to upset my parents who loved me dearly and wished for me the best possible future. Therefore, I followed their advice, graduated from a law school and began to work as a secretary for the president of the National Railway Company. But dealing with the endless paperwork quickly made me realize that it was not the life I wanted. Under my desk, I kept a small electronic keyboard that I would secretly play when no one else was around while looking at the passing trains behind the window. A silent voice of fear whispered in my ear. What if that was it? What if studying composition remains only unfulfilled dream? That fear motivated me to show some of my early compositions to a professor from Latvian Academy of Music, and it became a turning point in my life. He encouraged me to take the entry exams already the next year, and obviously I felt an enormous fear it meant that I would compete with people who were studying music for years and were much better prepared. Was I good enough? Was it even possible? Should I better give up before it's too late and I fail miserably in front of the board of examiners? The fear that I felt didn't stop me. It motivated me to work twice as hard. And 12 months later, I enrolled as a student of the composition department. Fear had become not only my enemy, but also an ally. But that was only the beginning of our beautiful friendship. Living in a state of constant alarm and anxiety that was completely normal for me those days, I discovered that a great source of peace and tranquility for me was nature, and specifically forest. However, having grown up in the city, I never had a chance to spend much time in it. Everything was great in the daylight, and when I was together with other people, but when I was alone, it turned into a different story. What would be a nice and relaxed stroll in the forest for most would quickly become a vivid theater of horror for me. Surely, the woods are full of wild animals who are only waiting for the opportunity to jump out from their hideout and tear me into pieces, not to mention all the ghosts and cheeky spirits that appear in the dark. But confronting the object of my fear had proved to work in my advantage before. Could the same happen again? What if I wrote a piece of music about forest? What if trees and plants were imagined to be alive and given a voice? 
That idea became the first three opera. At the beginning, it was a short piece for three singers who sang from the tops of the trees and three percussionists playing on the ground. But soon after the performance, I was approached by Finnish producers who offered to stage another tree, tree opera in Finland in an ancient old growth forest. My journey into fear was going to be continued. To find the right location, our creative team set out on a research trip. Straight upon the arrival at the Finnish forest, the local guide pointed across the road and said that the territory was populated by bears. What? Bears. Real, big, black and bloodthirsty bears. I looked around to the rest of the group. No one else seemed to have realized the inevitable death that we were all facing. <laughs> They began to walk along the path as if nothing had happened, cracking jokes and enjoying the crisp Nordic air. I didn't say anything because I was afraid that they will only laugh at me and tell me to chill. On our way back, we found a bear's poo on the path. As if that wasn't enough. In the evening, they decided to watch Werner Herzog's Grizzly Man, a film where the main character and his girlfriend are eaten by a bear. On our first trip to Finland, I never went into the forest on my own. But when we came back the second time, I had decided to deal with it. Armed with a wooden stick, I entered the woods on my own. I used the stick to hit the trees and sang out loud some Latvian folk songs in order to scare off the beasts. Esus kapu dziedadama, balta buala kalniņa. Nothing happened, no one showed up, I was fine. The third time, I was already jogging to the location of the event with my headphones on, listening to Prodigy smack my bitch up. <laughs> And suddenly, I realized that my fear wasn't a disadvantage. It was actually my strength that helped me in composition process. Since I was still writing the score, I used that fear to spark my imagination. I could imagine all kinds of creatures lurking from behind the trees and the black holes between their roots. I could easily see the way those creatures move and hear the different sounds they make. Tree Opera Winthrows in Finland was a project that involved a crew of more than 50 people. Eight singers, eight musicians, a team of architects and artists who did an amazing job by building the stage using only biodegradable materials, the wonderful organizers of Musterinda Artist Residency and others. Some of the singers now had to confront their own fear, having to sing from the platforms that were placed 13 meters above the ground. To get them up there, we had to use the help of professional climbers, but four different companies refused, saying that it was not possible. Luckily, there was the fifth one. Fear that had initially been only an obstacle now had turned into a creative force. I learned that it is a very powerful emotion that can be transformed into other kinds of energy and lead to a constructive action. The process of overcoming fear began to give me a sense of thrill and excitement. It forced me to leave my comfort zone and venture into territories that would often surprise me. For example, on the surface, it might look that tree opera is simply my attempt at becoming more sensitive to the forest as a special and unique environment that frightens. But on the second thought, I'm now able to discover how deeply forest influences our daily lives. Being a city girl, I had never before realized that artificial light, heat and fuel that moves the city life is the way we still depend on the forests whose fossils are burning throughout our cities. With the air we breathe, we inhale what forests exhale. What we exhale, trees inhale. In whatever way the human civilization has tried to eliminate forests, we are tightly interconnected.
Without forests, we would not be alive. None of these discoveries would have become apparent to me if I would not have dared to overcome my fear. We all know that fear can easily become a destructive energy, preventing us from reaching our full potential, but the opposite can also be true. I believe that we can use our fear as a source of inspiration and discovery. Fear can become a creative force. I invite you now to listen to the intro part of the tree opera called Radiques, which in translation from Latin means roots. Oh. 
Oh, 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 oh,